Running is pretty simple, right? Or is it? It's actually quite easy to get overwhelmed by the huge array of colourful running shoes on offer or get distracted by the latest article on running training fashions. But don't worry, if all you want to do is run, whether you're new to running or you're coming back after some time off, we've got the video to help because today I'm going to be covering the basic kit you need to get running. All right, let's start with the big one, shoes. Now, the topic of running shoes can be the most confounding topic to new runners. There's so many questions such as, what shoe do you need? Do you need cushioning? How about support? Will your fashion plimsolls do the job? Well, there are so many questions, but there's a couple of key points that you do really need to take into consideration. So we're gonna start with those. All right. Just grabbed my shoe here to talk through the essential points and the first one being fit. Now, there's no exact size compared to your normal shoe size because every brand does vary a little bit, but there's a couple of general rules of thumb when it comes to finding the right fit for your trainer. Now, you want something that fits snugly enough so your foot isn't going to move inside the shoe too much, especially at the heel because you want to minimize any chance of rubbing in this area. And then when it comes to the front of the shoe, the thought is to have roughly a thumb's width or a maximum distance of a thumb's width between the end of your toes or the longest toe and the end of the shoe to prevent any potential blistering that could happen in that area. Well, going almost hand in hand with fit is comfort. Now, just because a shoe fits properly, though, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be comfortable. So obviously, fit comes first, and then you need to find something that actually gives the right comfort. So that could be the shape inside the shoe, the amount of support it gives, and also the cushioning. That will play a part in comfort. So ideally, when you're buying a new pair of running shoes, you really do need to try them on, and more than just standing in them in the shop, ask if you can go for a jog up and down on the pavement outside, or take them home and have a little bit of a walk around the house or a test on a treadmill if you're really lucky because if they're not comfortable, you're probably not going to want to go running. Support. This is a mystery to a lot of new runners, but it basically comes down to how your foot makes contact with the ground. So what happens during the stance phase of your running gait? And there's kind of two options here, basically which way your foot moves from side to side. And it's quite rare, but some people have supination. So that is when they land and their foot slightly rolls outwards. If you do have that style of running, then you just need a perfectly neutral trainer. If, however, you have too much pronation, that's when your foot rolls the other way so it becomes excessively flat that's when you might want to have support but before you go and get a supportive shoe a certain amount of pronation is entirely normal and actually very good because it's our body's way of absorbing the shock and having good biomechanics so you need to get assessed to see whether and how your foot moves as to what type of shoe you have but the two main options are either a neutral shoe or an over pronating shoe And then we have style. Yes, I've put that third because in theory it should be the least important, but if you have a shoe that fits incredibly well, it's got the right amount of comfort, but you don't like the look of it, well, it's probably not gonna help you with motivating yourself to get out the door and go for a run. So you do need to take that into consideration as well, but it's very much a matter of finding all three so you can enjoy your running. And on top of that, once you've sorted your shoe, you need to make sure that you've got your training sorted. I know this video is very much about the right kit to get running, but you do still need to have a good training plan and it's really easy for new runners to get carried away and want to do loads and loads of running but it's still important that you make sure you build up gradually and you have plenty of rest and recovery after each run and if you go by the 10% rule that's quite a good guide so don't increase the amount of running you're doing each week by more than 10%. Right now we have clothing and in theory you can run in pretty much whatever you want but if it's something that's really comfortable and you like the look of you're far more likely to go running so it is worth investing in a couple of key pieces that are going to tick those boxes and you can look for specific breathable fabric that's also going to wick away the sweat but prevent rubbing because chafage can be an issue for runners so bear that in mind and when it comes to the bottom half it's a good idea to find a really comfortable pair of leggings that are going to stay up when you're running 
or if you're going for shorts then something that's definitely not going to rub and apparently guys you need to find shorts with an inner mesh to help with support girls it's definitely worth investing in a decent sports bra that's just going to make running that much more comfortable and enjoyable and then with the different climates if you're running in really hot weather you definitely want something that's thin and it's going to help breathe or layers are the best way forwards for changing temperature and i find it doesn't matter if it's long sleeve short sleeves if you've got lots of layers you can take them off as you get hot or depending on what the weather's doing and for extreme climates if it's really cold then a pair of gloves can make a world of difference as can a headband or a woolly hat or even a buff which you can change around if you are running somewhere really hot it's a good idea to protect your eyes and your face so either a cap a visor or a pair of sunglasses will all add to the comfort when you come to running You really don't need anything else other than what we've covered, but there are a couple of extras which might complement your running experience. And the first one is as simple as a watch, and it doesn't even have to be a running specific watch. Any watch that tells the time will at least allow you to know how long you've been running for. And if you're doing a set loop on lots of your runs, you'll be able to gauge if you're getting any quicker at doing that loop. And if you want to get something a bit more advanced, then maybe with intervals, so you can set a, a watch to beep, so you know you want to run hard for a set a bit run easy for a little bit further if you're going the next step you might want to watch with gps so you can upload your runs onto whatever social media platform and compare how you're doing compared to others and how you're progressing along with that and that then leads me on to heart rate and you can buy a separate heart rate monitor for pretty cheap around 20 to 30 pounds that can monitor your heart rate whilst you're running or you could have a watch that has an inbuilt heart rate monitor within it and the idea of having your heart rate when you're running is to make sure you're running not too hard on the easy bits or if you're wanting to do something intense you can see how hard you're working and again it's all about monitoring that progress and it just really helps as another thing for motivation. Finally, and probably the wisest way to spend your money would be to join a local running club. It's a great way to make running social, meet friends, even potentially find a coach and get some structure to your running. So if you are new to running, it can be a little bit intimidating. So do a bit of research, maybe speak to your local running shop. Some running shops even have their own clubs or social runs. Maybe even find a running group on Facebook that isn't necessarily a club. You might not even need to pay, but you can just go along and find like-minded people. And it's amazing how much you can pick up from running with others. And you you never know, you might progress down the line to doing some events for your club and it's just a great way to motivate and it's something that I've found over the years has made such a difference to my running, doing the odd cross country race and just knowing you've got other people out there wearing the same vest as you, going through the same training sessions and there's often group sessions you can join in and then take away and go and do them yourself. So we have covered a lot as well as obviously the basic kit to get you started. You might however still have lots of questions if you are new to running so feel free to leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you on those but hopefully I've given you some motivation to go out running or at least given the ideas of what will help you to motivate. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, give us a like and a follow and check out our social media channels.